Good morning, church. This is Pastor Victor Torres from New Wine Ministries. How are you this morning? New Wine Ministries in Waterford, Michigan. Uh, good to be with you this morning. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Uh, uh, just as people continue to come on here for just a minute, I want to give you the word of encouragement for today. <clears throat> it was a wonderful Resurrection Sunday yesterday. We had a wonderful time. Of course, everybody was home primarily, and uh, and of course, we did service from home, and and uh, the Lord had a word for, for yesterday, and I, I believe that the Lord is is speaking to many, many people, specifically in this time, and, and in regards to this time, I believe that there is a great harvest out there that is waiting for laborers to help uh, go and tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ, go and give them hope where there is no hope. And so I just want to uh, uh, thank you for joining me this morning. And uh, um, I am so thankful for the presence of God. I am so thankful uh, that he is faithful, uh, that he continues to move in such special ways. I trust that the anointing of God, uh, every time that we come together, I trust that the anointing of God just ministers to you. Not just gives you a word, but that his anointing ministers to you. That, that means his presence, the presence of God ministers to you. And so I'm just believing God for him to move in such very special ways um, uh, like he's never had before in your life. I just want to go ahead and let me do this here really quick. Can everybody hear me this morning? I just want to want to know. We're trying something a little bit different. We're trying to control the the volume a little bit more in regards to uh, uh, what's being heard. And uh, so when we had the different mic on, of course, we uh, you could hear everything in the house. You could hear <laughs> you could hear the refrigerator. That mic was that good. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and and begin to uh, uh, give you the word this morning. I have something special for you. I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, you, you know, last week uh, we had left off with a particular scripture. Let me give you that scripture. We had left off with Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And we were talking about, in fact, we've been talking about probably for about the past week and a half, about hearing the voice of God and the importance of being able to hear the voice of God and to be able to distinguish the voice of God uh, from your own soul, that is your intellect, your emotions, uh, your your own will, um, and being able to hear God and discern the difference between his voice, your soul, and the voice of your the enemy. And it's important to understand that, and it's something that we have to be very uh, uh, aware with, not just aware, but uh, real with, because there are times that that we can uh, uh, proclaim that we have heard from the Lord and we say it and we use the Lord's name to, to make us, uh, allow us to be seen by other people in certain ways and, uh, and allow people to know that we are hearing from the Lord. Um, but how many of you know that uh, many times we have missed it? Remember we talked about in the beginning that these things would happen by trial and error, but you won't get the just of trial and error if you think that everything that you think say is from the Lord is from the Lord, and it's not. We have to be honest with ourselves and understand and learn what's not God and what is your own emotions and what is uh, sometimes whispers of the enemy, okay? And so this is important to understand. It's important to, uh, to grasp because not only do you depend on it, because God wants to give you fresh manna every day. He wants to give you direction in your life from the Word of God. Uh, we talked about the Word of God, the Logos Word that God gives us, His principles. Um, but then He gives you particular words that are, are right on for the moment. He gives you a rhema word of life that it, he breathes into the moment uh, because maybe there's a particular uh, temptation or maybe you need it for right that moment uh, to be able to give to somebody else. This is, this is where rightly discerning the word of God is absolutely necessary because it's not just for you. It becomes now food and nourishment, sustenance for other people. How many of you know somebody right now in your family or, or around you that needs a word of encouragement? And if you do, you may be the one to be able to give it to them. Many times it's not something that you have to give a word of correction because many times you have to win a place in that person's life for them to be able to hear a word of correction from you. Um, and sometimes, I mean, it, you know, we think a lot of times like we have the fix it. Uh, we have the, the thing to fix it, okay? 
And sometimes God's not wanting you to fix it. Sometimes God's just wanting you to listen. And sometimes God is wanting you to, to win over um, some confidence in their lives so that you earn the right to be able to speak into their lives. That's important. Um, there are many times to where I don't give any kind of, uh, I don't give any kind of direction. I don't give any kind of, of, of uh, principles of the kingdom. I'm just, I'm just sitting and listening to an individual uh, to be able to, to win a place in their hearts, so that when I do have something to speak. It carries weight for them. It carries a, a word of the Lord. It carries something that, that they know that I care about them. I think many times we're so quick to uh, we're so quick to talk, and we're so quick to uh, to fix it. And uh, and many times it's the listening portion that we need to uh, uh, adhere to and listen to because many people maybe in times past have expected you know the pointing of the finger from us. Um, but how many of you know that, uh, that the Lord's really not like that? If, if the Lord has a word of correction, um, there's a right time, there's a right place. And uh, if the Lord has, has wanted you to give a, a, a word to somebody or give a, a, a word of correction, loving word of correction, um, uh, you have to be able to win a place in that person's heart to be able to do it. Amen? Or else they just won't even listen to it. So... I said all that to say this, the hearing of the voice of God is absolutely necessary. In fact, you won't be able to live through these times that we're in right now without knowing and, and having the ability to hear the voice of God. Amen. So we've been on that particular portion. Uh, I left off with the uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so that word diligently is always a word that stuck out to me. That means that, that, means that everything that God has available to me and, and to my family, um, that he will work into our lives because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so I have always tried to set my heart to seek him. I've always tried to, 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 to be diligent. And there are times that I'm just not diligent. I'm not organized or these different kinds of things. And, and things kind of get out of whack at times. But I've always tried to make my heart like that of David to where if there is something there in my heart or something that has caused a misalignment, that I would go before the Lord and repent of that thing and so that I can move forward in the things of God. And when I say repent, I mean turn away from it, ask for forgiveness, and begin uh, to look at the principles of the kingdom, to look at what God is really uh, wanting to show me and walk in it. Remember the word obedience? It's not enough just to hear. It's got to be uh, a place of obedience. We have to follow through. And sometimes it takes time to follow through, amen? It doesn't always happen the first time. Thank God for long-suffering, that He is a long-suffering God, uh, that he, he will take time with us and, and show us. And, and, and so God understands the thought and, or the concept of learning by precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And I'm so thankful for that because sometimes I'm thick-headed. Sometimes it takes me like longer than the average guy to, to learn a principle or to get a principle ingrained in me, okay? And so you're not alone out there. I, I get it. I understand that. And so um, here, just I'd like to give you this other principle, <clears throat> this other thought for a moment, because it goes along with the aspect of, of uh, hearing his voice. It goes along with the aspect of, of diligently seek, seeking him. See, diligently seeking Him doesn't mean just reading the Word of God. Diligently seeking Him means allowing Him to come and be the center of your finances, allowing Him to come and be the center of your marriage, allowing Him to come and be the center of your relationship with your children. And, and so you're constantly, diligently seeking His, His precepts to be able to infuse into relationships, into the way that you walk on a daily, daily, your daily life. And, uh, and this is important because when God sees that you are diligently seeking him, and you might be doing it all wrong, okay? There are sometimes you're doing it wrong, and I'm doing it wrong. But if he sees the diligence, he will come in, 
and he will reward the diligence, meaning that he will give you the truth, he will give you understanding. Uh, how many of you know, and you've heard me say this before, understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. So God wants to give you understanding so that we don't keep doing it wrong, but that we, we get it right. Okay, but he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so God is going to meet you and he's going to reward you for that time that you invest. God is, God is all about investment and he, he, he moves upon the faith of those that, uh, that seek after him. I was watching a movie, put it on my uh, Facebook, I believe. Um, it's called The Chosen. And this is about the, the life of the disciples and the life of Jesus. And, and it, it was one of the, uh, the best uh, series that I've ever seen before because they actually humanized Jesus. They didn't make them all spiritual. They actually humanized the disciples. Uh, they weren't all spiritual. <clears throat> and so that relationship between Jesus and the disciples was just a, a precious one because uh, you saw the, lo the long suffering of God, of Jesus. But I said all that to say this, is that there, there's that aspect of, of not just learning his voice and not just grabbing the principles of the kingdom, but understanding how the principles work, how, how that you are a part of this kingdom that is different from this natural order that we live in. And now you have to learn the principles of the kingdom the same way that you learned the principles of this world that we live in. We understand gravity. We understand that what goes up must come down. We understand business uh, uh, practices within our nation or within our state. And, and some some states are different than other states, okay? They operate under different principles, okay? The rule of law should be the same, but they do operate in different principles. Uh, you, you, you look at this nation, and we live according to a constitution. And, and so any, any laws or anything should be made directly from that constitution. And so with that, you live according to the kingdom of God. And so with that, you have to begin to learn how this constitution reads. Why? So that you can, you can take advantage of it through this relationship, this marriage relationship that you have with God the Father, and so that you will not be taken advantage of by the enemy. Okay, it happens all the time. And so the more that you understand that this is a whole new kingdom, it operates on a whole different uh, way of life. And so you learn. So a, a particular word that I want to share with you is the word principle. It's an important word. And the word principle is similar to that of a word, the word laws or precepts. Okay. And so this is interesting because in, let me give you this scripture here just really quick. It is. Hebrews chapter uh, 5, verse 12, and I'm just giving you the, the thought, the definition, the understanding of the word principles. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Okay? And so that particular uh, uh, word there, principles or oracles, oracles is scriptures, but principles has to do with uh, something in orderly arrangement. And that's important to understand because God has an order of arrangement according to his word, according to the principles of the kingdom. A particular book that is very good about this is, is by Dr. Miles Monroe, Principles of the Kingdom. And it's a very powerful book, but it really enlightens you and gives you an understanding that you are living, if you're a believer, saved by the blood, filled with his Holy Spirit, and you, you begin to understand that there's even a new language of the kingdom that God gives us, okay? And so with that new language is the understanding of his principles, which is another word for laws, and which is another word for precepts, okay? But the basis of that word is something orderly, in arrangement. And so when we come into this kingdom, we begin to learn those things that are orderly and that are in arrangement. It is how God functions. It is how he rules. It is how we get to know the character of God because every principle ever created in the kingdom was created by him. And so we get to understand his character, his personality. Many times, you've heard me say this before in one of the other teachings, is that many times we take, uh, I've seen people take one particular scripture, 
one particular portion of Scripture in one book and create a whole personality of God, and they can't do that. They cannot do that. You have to look from Genesis all the way to Revelations to, to gain knowledge about who God is and, and His character, His attributes, and, and His precepts and his laws, because by doing that, we understand the purpose of God, we understand the character of God, we understand the personality of God. So taking one particular scripture like that is like, for example, if I came into the room that, that my daughter and my wife were having a conversation, and or let's not use that example, let's, let's say I just met somebody that I didn't know, we were in the grocery market and I turned the corner and I saw this mother talking to this child and she was just uh, uh, just uh, maybe saying some some uh, correcting words to her and and the way that she was doing it she was just very harsh and in my mind I may be thinking because that's the only part I've seen of that woman and the way that she was treating her daughter at that moment that I might think that oh my gosh she is really heavy-handed she shouldn't be talking to her kid that way but what I haven't seen is the whole scope of their relationship, how, how maybe the child uh, needs those times of correction more than another child would, okay? And, and in, in the open, because there are times that, that if my child uh, uh, disobeyed me openly in the public, then I would correct them openly in the public. And so um, there are times that we grasp one particular scene of someone's life, and we judge them, we judge their whole character on that one particular scene, and it's incorrect. We can't do that. And it's many times, it's the same way that we do that with God, is that we look at one portion of Scripture, and we make uh, judgments on His whole character and personality based on that one particular Scripture, and we can't do that. Because there are times that you will become uh, very heavy-handed in the judgments of God. God is, 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 is just coming hard on judgment, and, and He wants to come down hard. And if that's all you read, that's the only part of God you will ever know. But then you begin to see the other side as well, too, and the other spectrum, is that there is never the judgment of God without mercy. Never, ever, ever. And so... I wanted to give you the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. And so I'm going to give you another scripture here where it talks about principles. And it is in Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says this, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. I'm sharing this particular word, or this, this word on principles, because it says, Therefore, if you died with Christ, in water baptism, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, water baptism, your death to the old nature, being rose up again, okay? The resurrection, you partake of the resurrection of Christ. And it says, if you died from the basic principles of the world, that means that, that the, the way that the world functions, the way that the world sees uh, um, salvation or, or death and all these different things, how they see it, that when we come to Christ, that we die to those principles and we take on a whole new understanding of the principles of the kingdom, okay? This is important to understand because you begin to see that, wait a minute, Wait a minute, it's line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. In fact, let me go to that scripture. It is in Isaiah chapter 28. Let's see if I can go to it, if I still have it here somewhere. Hallelujah, it's here somewhere. Okay, let me do this. Isaiah chapter 28. Verse 13, and the prophet was just simply saying this, But the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And this is an important understanding. And, and I'll just leave you with this, that as you continue to learn the character of God. I always, want, I always want you to understand it like this, to learn the character and the nature and the personality of God. 
there are many of you that, that know me to a certain extent uh, because you've seen me pastor. Um, you know, uh, you come to church on Sundays, Wednesdays, and different things like that. Uh, and so you know a part of me, okay? Um, even though that same person that's there is the same person that's at home, but you don't know all of me, okay? And it takes time to get to know a person in, in the totality of their character, uh, what they, uh, how they tick when they get mad or what makes them mad or what buttons uh, are pushed in order to kind of make them angry or, or different things or, or what makes them happy or what makes them sad and, and these different parts of the individual that, that you may not know because you have not seen them function in those ways. But the more that you get to know someone, the closer you get to them, this is, this is so important, uh, the greater that you understand about them, you, you understand how they function. Uh, did you know that God has emotions and that God's heart can literally be hurt? You can hurt the heart of God. When, when Jesus, it, it said that Jesus was looking at Jerusalem and he began to weep because of the condition of his people. And he, his, his emotions uh, showed us a picture of what God the Father uh, feels in the heavens. And so there are times that we can, uh, the Bible says it like this, that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And that word grieve there means that, that we can actually hurt his heart um, because we have taken a different direction uh, than what he knows is necessary or what we need. And so, uh, church, I, I just want to leave you with that thought. The principles of the kingdom, uh, the precepts of the kingdom are something that, that you gather and you begin to understand who God is, how he works, his character, his nature, his personality. And so he has an orderly arrangement, okay? This has everything to do with hearing the voice of God and, and going forward because you, you want to judge rightly the character of God. There are things that that we can look at in the Word of God, and we can look at the Old Testament and think, God, you were so hard back then. But the same God that's in the Old Testament is the same God that's in the New Testament. Okay, We have now seen uh, the whole attributes of God, the, the, uh, all, all these different sides of Him. We have seen uh, the heavy-handedness of God. We have seen the mercy of God, the long-suffering of God. If you're in the Word long enough, you will be able to see that God wants you to understand who He is. He wants you to understand His principles. He wants you to understand His attributes and, and, to, and to love Him for who He is. Amen? Amen. Okay, uh, I want to I leave you with that. <clears throat> I just want to continue to encourage you. Um, uh, I believe that, that God is going to ever make himself evident to you as you continue to, to uh, diligently seek him. That's the thing, church. That's the key, to be able to diligently seek him because God honors your faith. Now I remember what I was going to tell you, why I brought that movie in, uh, The Chosen. <clears throat> it has to do with today's message. Is that there was a scene when Jesus was showing, beginning to show himself public about the miracles that he was doing. And he was in the house of uh, uh, Zebedee, the, the, the sons of Zebedee. He was in their house and he was just sharing with them the gospel. There was a crowd of people. He had already done some miracles prior to that. And there was this woman that saw him heal a, a leprous man filled with leprosy. And, and because she saw him, she went back and she got one of her friends that was a paralytic. And this is the scene where the paralytic, where, where she just pressed through. She, she, there was crowds all over, and Jesus was speaking. And she knew that if she could get her friend uh, to Jesus, that Jesus could heal him. And so um, uh, she got to the roof. She, she let his fr her friend down with some other guys, uh, brought him down through the roof, uh, and got him to where Jesus could, could heal him. And there was a scene, and I know that there, there's some poetic justice here taken when, when they made this movie, but there was the part that, that he looked up at her, and he said, he said to her something that, that just struck me. He said, your faith is beautiful. Think about that. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
And so I- if there's anything that we ever have to work on, it's, it's making our faith beautiful to him making our faith to where it is line upon line, precept upon precept. The faith that you operate in today will be greater in six months from today if you will allow yourself to take those steps of faith, okay, in hearing his voice, whether it's his voice or your voice, in in being able to take some of the principles of God and applying them to your life and your family's life, the principles of finance, these different things, and, and you allow yourself to step into this place and God will look at your faith and he says, your faith is beautiful to me. How precious is that? Amen? Okay. All right. Um, God bless you. Uh, I love you. Uh, Let me go ahead and let me pray for you, okay? Father, we know that there are situations and circumstances all over the place. And Father, we know that there are many things happening, Father, uh, around this COVID-19. And and Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your presence is is even more in the midst of us, and that, Father, you have made your presence known to this nation and many other nations, O God. And so, Father, we pray that you would continue, Father, to stretch your hand of mercy, Lord God, uh, over these in the hospitals, and, Father, those that that, that are working in the hospitals, those that that, that are sick with COVID-19. Father, we thank you that you would be in their very midst, and, Father, supernaturally minister to them, Father, your hand of peace, comfort. Father, most of all, your hand of mercy. Father, we are a nation that is crying out for your mercy, O God, because even in our sickness, in our transgressions, in our sin, Father, you sent your Son to die for us. And so, Father, we just receive that mercy, Father, in the hospitals, Father, just roundabout in the neighborhoods. Father, I thank you uh, for uh, Cecilia Yabara just going around her neighborhood and just praying, Father, for her different neighbors. Did you know, church, that you could do that? You can go out just uh, in, in the midst of your neighborhood and just begin to pray. You don't have to make a spectacle of yourself. You just begin to pray. And, and I mean, get out of your house and go do these things. Just begin to pray for your neighbors and begin to pray for the salvation of God to begin to come into their households. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you would continue Continue to minister, Father, your hand of mercy and comfort to this nation, to this state. Father, we lift up our governor right now, Father, and the different uh, uh, decisions that are needing to be made. Father, our president, the different decisions that are needing to be made uh, economically, Lord God, and for the health of this nation, the people in this nation. Father, we just declare, Father, and thank you ahead of time that, Father, that you would bring forth your wisdom and rest it upon their shoulders. Father, governors all over this nation, Father, the president and the vice president, that your spirit of wisdom would rest upon you and that they would reach out to your wisdom. Father, there are limitations to the scientist. Father, this nation cannot make science their God. They cannot, Father, lift up scientists to the highest platform because, Father, uh, you will show us then that, that, Father, that you are way above them and so, Father, even we are asking that, Father, that, that when there are limitations upon science, when there are limitations upon those that, that have such wisdom in this world, Father, take us beyond our human capabilities. Take us beyond our human wisdom. That, Father, that we may acknowledge you openly, that this is the wisdom of God. It's not something I did. It's not something I conjured up. It's not something I figured out. But God gave me wisdom. Father, let it be said from the highest office in the land. So, Father, we bless your people in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen, amen. I'm just looking down here at some of the comments down here. Uh, I just thank you for being with me. Uh, We have Ken Spragues. uh, uh, Drew, Ken, it's nice nice to be with you this morning. Nicholas. Uh, Ruth Cagle, we've got my wife on there. She's kind of watching me, eyeballing me. Uh, Diane, Charlie Allen, Carly, good to see you. Good to hear of you. Uh, Suzanne, Korea, uh, we've got my sister on there, my sweet older sister, Roxanne. And uh, we've got some other people on there, my mother-in-law, my sweet mother-in-law, Sue. Amanda Lambert, uh, we've got some other people on there as well, Jody. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I just w- 
want to thank you, and we will see you again tomorrow. God bless.